Priya and I am going to show you about the mummification project from ancient Egypt. First is to take the dead body and you used to take off all its clothes. And then you used to rinse it in a bath of salt water. It has to be salt water. Uh, so uh, you leave after the salt bath you take it out and you dry it thoroughly with a small kind of cloth. After it is completely dry, you keep aside the salt water bath and you take, this is the most disgusting part. You take a hook and you put it through the nostrils and up the brain. For the rich people, you mash up the brain, flush it out. But normally what you do is you take it out and you flush and you just pull it out like that. That's the brain. And that usually is just thrown away, thrown away. After that, you let the body, you cut a slit right here from right under the waist, from right under the ribcage to right over the waist. And you cut it open with a sharp sword after sharpening it. Cut it open just from that. And then you take out all the you take out all the organs except of the heart. As the heart is known as the guidance to the underworld, which is where they go after they are dead. The ancient Egyptians used to think of death as just a small phase in life. It's just a next thing to the another part of life. They used to think life is for full eternity and you can have many lives in your life. So they used to take out all the organs except the heart and put them in four canopic jars. I don't have the lids because they're really old and hard to find. So the, um, all those lids have four gods in them and each specific god carries each specific organ. And all the four gods are the son of the main god in ancient Egypt, Horus. It's an... Lord Horus is an eye and the eye he protects, he he's the protector. Lord Horus, the eye of Horus, you must have heard. Now the lungs. There is the first son, the Harpy. Harpy protects the lungs. Then the stomach. Vamatef, the second son, protects the stomach. In Seti, in Seti, the third son protects the liver. And the last son, the youngest son, Kabesenef, protects the intestines. Now, after these are all put in these four main jars, the body is taken out and is put on a bed of natron, which is a special salt. Mainly made out of two basic clean ingredients. Soda ash and baking soda. They are put in there and left alone without any attendance for 70 days. After 70 days, they are taken out and, um, and, they are, and then what they are done, they are put in a layer of resin oil and other tree resins. Um, and they are washed nicely with all this resin in it. After being nicely soaked, they are put in yet another bed of natron. This time for around 30 days. Now, once again, they put it again through another layer of resin and tree resins. And lastly, through that slit, which had been stitched when the organs were removed, so that it doesn't take up, it doesn't rot. They cut it open once more and they put in all kinds of herbs and spices inside, inside the body. They fill it in like stuffing. Next, now the body is probably shriveled up like a nugget or a raisin. So what they're going to do now is they're going to they're going to like, you know, cover it in linen. Now, linen is a special fabric 
which is used to cover them so it stays forever. So you wrap it around the body and the hands should always be like that when you wrap. As you can see, none of mummies have their hands out of their head. They are always like that on their abdomen. So they wrap it up. After you wrap up your mummy, your mummy must look like that because they wrap the head last. Now, they make a realistic face mask and they put it onto the mummy for, to make it look more realistic. And they add fake eyes, mouth, nose and wig. They don't have to shave the head because, fun fact, in ancient Egypt there was a lice problem. So, if ancient, in all the ancient Egyptians used to shave their heads and wear wigs. So, if their wigs got lies, they could just throw it away and get a new one. So, they put a false wig on and they wrapped it up. Now, at the final, your, your wrapped up mummy must look like that. So, this is your mummy now. Now, what they are going to do is now we need to bury it. Because... It doesn't exactly smell very good. Now you have to bury it in a sarcophagus, which is a special case. Like this. This is a sarcophagus. And your finished mummy should look like this. When it's all done, shriveled up. You put it in the sarcophagus and then you start to bury it. Now robbers may come and they may steal your well. So you have to build a pyramid. Fun fact, fun fact, pharaohs used to like to build their tombs before they were even dead so they could see how they would live forever or so they thought before us humans found them. Now these are the last few steps. After in the sarcophagus they are put in rolls of their most famous curses of their curses, the ones they invented, their most favorite ones and lots of blessings and peace notes like that and they are put through a lot of wealth like like mummified animals golden animals sculptured golden animals and mummified cats most of all as they are known to keep them company and are good food in the afternoon their own hook which had been used to bury out the brain and they had been used Lots of wealth and coins. Fun fact. They, King Tut, the most famous, he had 5,000 items buried with him. Because the more items you have, the more likely it is that you survive in the afterlife. He also had two baby girls buried along with him. Which is probably his two daughters. Kept there to keep him company. After you are all this is done, you are... There is halfway around the mummifying, your most special thing, your little, there's a bug placed here on, it, on the heart and then it is fully wrapped again so it is gone. And lastly, they take all the treasures you have, all the gems, all the gems and they put it in, like, just like that. So that is the story of how a mummy is made, very disgusting. Maybe a little creepy, but you have to say, very interesting.